This video is brought to you by Craven's Comic Books and Collectibles. Check out their weekly live show auction and sale at facebook.com slash Craven's Comics every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And you can check out their inventory at cravenscomics.com. Craven's Comics, for the comics you crave. Welcome to the show. Say hello, thank you. Dr. Ademchik, yes, bro, bro, yes. how's it going? <laughs> doing, I'm doing fine, thank you for having me. Um, and uh, congratulations on your Polish pronunciation of my name, because that was stunning. Thank you very much. I got I got a little uh, coaching before the show, so uh, yeah, worked out, worked out. Well, so Piotr, um, of course, you play Thomas, who's one of the members of the tracksuit mafia, uh, a uh, a group of mobsters that uh, ended up becoming a rival of Hawkeyes back during his Ronin era. So what's it been like? Like, tell us a little bit about the experience being a member of the tracksuit mafia. You know, first of all, I'm like Polish actor important to the United States just for this part in the way. You know, I, I, I did a few different roles on American soil, but uh, it's just, I feel like it's beginning. I'm like a debuting here or something like that. So yeah, it was a great gift, especially that I got this role when I was already very hungry for acting because of the pandemic right and yeah. so it was like an incredible gift like to be able to act again and especially on the marvel set everything was new everything was great uh i am happy to be cast together with the great friends of mine uh because we became really uh, we sort of bonded uh, with this tracks of mafia guys with alex paunovic with uh, with uh, Fra, uh, Fra Fee and uh, Carlos Navarro. Uh, so they were helping me as well to understand what's going on on set sometimes. Uh, we were improvising. Uh, it was incredible experience. Uh, yeah, I was just, it, it's, I, I didn't even know that it's possible to be so happy from the, uh, from the next role you're, you're uh, having. And uh, yeah, I'm having a blast. That's awesome. Yeah, I was want to ask you about uh, whether or not you were able to do uh, any kind of improvising because it just seems like the the, the tracksuit mafia just lends itself to have a little bit of fun with what's been going on. You know, not just stick to the script. Uh, you know, as it were. Yeah, we we were able. Uh, sometimes even we were asked to do that. So I, for example, I was very happy to sneak some Polish words. Uh, you know, I'm playing the. Thomas is his Polish, so it was with a very, very thick Polish accent. And uh, and sometimes I was like sneaking some Polish stuff as well. And it was uh, it was great. Uh, right now in Poland, it, it, it's so strange because I, I, I'm get, I receiving so many tweets, memes, and uh, my countrymen are enjoying that there are some Polish um, stuff in Marvel production, in Marvel universe. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, when I look at Thomas, he seems like a guy that just really wants respect. Like he doesn't like the fact that, you know, like when he's holding an interrogation that Hawkeye is asking for his boss, that he's seeing Thomas as middle management. So do you feel that that's like the main driving force behind Thomas? That he just wants respect? I think that's a... That's a, a very common, uh, uh, you know, uh, thing that we need respect or, uh, as, a, as a human being. I think uh, Thomas is uh, the weakest one from the group, you, you know. So, so, yeah, for him, it's very important to be treated with respect. And then sometimes, like, he, his anger, he's like a very, like, a trigger-happy guy. So he, he, he can jump, like, a few steps uh, with his anger. And uh, that's why probably he's dangerous as well. Yes, he's not predictable. Yeah, no, he he does seem to have a a little bit of a of a short temper. He just seems to be quick to be set off, and it, it's fun watching you know the whole group. But uh, you know, obviously uh, the character as well, because it's just yeah, like Andrew said, he doesn't get any respect. And I just I'm 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 just waiting for like an explosion from the character. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. Maybe maybe there will be some explosion as well. It's, it's, you know, we, we saw two episodes during uh, official premiere 
Right. And it was a it was a great screening because a lot of actors came with their families. It's a family film. And it's like action film, you, you know, Marvel film all together with the comedy, uh, with the chasing scenes and the Christmas vibe. Mm. It's, so a lot of children were like sitting behind me, in the row behind me, and the and they were like commenting and saying like, "Oh, this strikes with the mafia. They are so damn. They are so damn." And uh, I wanted just to turn and say, "Yeah, watch your mouth." You know, watch your mouth. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't. Uh, so so they are they are dangerous, but also funny. And I was happy even to read some critics like. We are, they called us lovable idiots. I didn't think that I would be happy to, to, to read something about me <laughs> this way. <laughs> but yeah, if we are lovable, we can be idiots as well. Why yeah, not? no, yeah. it's, it's fantastic. The, the, the lovable idiot thing is there, but also they, there's still some menace to you as well. Yeah. It's very much like the original uh, characters in the comics. It's like you guys have brought them to life. They, they're like on the screen. You guys are doing a great job with that. Now, of course, your history, you know, like in Europe, you've played some really big roles. Like you played the Pope, you played Chopin. Is it, is it more fun to like be in one of more of these supporting roles where you get to like muck around with a crew of guys as opposed to being like the first on the call sheet? Um, you know, the biggest fun for me was to, to be able to go out of this shelf of national heroes as well right yeah uh i i don't think it would be easy for me to get the part of the gangster because you know we, we always are you know this everywhere is a typecasting as well so you know i was like playing a lot of similar roles for some time and uh, this gift from marvel was a was a was a great gift for me so that was fun for me to actually explore and create you know different voice you know uh, accent and you know be a different guy um so that was that was the biggest uh, the biggest fun i i've got uh, and and then also being a member of this huge production because you know when you think about uh polish budgets you know our uh we we know how to do films and sometimes you know we have like a good films as as well and sometimes oscar Winners, so we, I'm proud of the Polish kinematography, but the budget-wise, uh, our uh, most uh, expensive um, the film uh, was Kvavadis, which was like ancient story uh, in ancient Rome, and it cost eighty million dollars, which is, which is you know when you when you count millions in hundreds, it's like a completely different story. So you know, I, I was having every day this. Oh, so that's the way it's it's done. Oh my God, so big uh, green screen, and this coming back to the same scene again and again and again and making it better and better and better. Uh, I understood how the films should be made. Um, it was a great experience, great lesson, mm, and acting wise as well. I could uh, I could start again because when you do the small role, um, you have to look at it and create it from the different angle especially if it's a comic book character uh um so so it gave me this kind of bravery that uh that is possible to be like a bigger than life sometimes um like not to be scared to be like like this credibility is like you know much bigger it, it could be like a really uh somebody else uh without controlling yourself so much. It's an interesting point because like what you're talking about, some of the other roles that you're you're famous for, especially in Poland, you know, you're playing historical figures, real people, like, you know, uh, things that we could all relate to on a, on a daily basis. Uh, not to say that the, you know, uh, the tracksuit mafia isn't relatable on some level for some people. <laughs> of uh, course it is. But, but, we, but, we, know, we all know this kind of, this type of people as well. They are li living guys as well. You know? yeah. So, yeah. No, for sure. Course. But I, I, I was Especially just... if you live in New York on, or Chicago, you can have like this yes. kind of Polish friend. <laughs> no, absolutely. I, but I was curious about, you know, like for yourself as an actor, like your process and, and coming into it, like how, 
you know, how much, how much different is it for you, the way you treat it, uh, coming into a character, like, as you were saying that you could treat bigger than life compared to say somebody who like a Chopin or, or the Pope that, you know, you have to be more grounded and real, like, you know, like, was that, was that like super fun and, and relaxing for you to be able to come in and just play something so crazy compared to where you need to be that realism involved? It's always a di different approach to the character. Uh, with Chopin, it was difficult as well because we are, we, we, we all have imagination about him. You know? um, sometimes based on the portraits or, or letters or books, biographies. Mm, but to be able to to fit in was a difficult task. Then I have like a more difficult task to fit into the not only imagination about the Pope John Paul II. So, first Polish Pope in the history of the church. But uh, when we started to shoot that film, uh, he was uh, alive. And uh, it was like this comparison between, you know, I was playing the young Pope and then old Pope, me being 35 or 33 at that time. So that was a big task. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now it's like a completely different story. Uh, so when you said, did I have fun? Yes, fun, that's a great name for what I have um, playing Thomas. Uh, and uh, a f freedom as well, because I could, I could create it from the scratch. And so I was, you know, we on set sometimes our first audiences are the crew. And uh, over here on Marvel show, it's like a great professionalist everywhere in every, in every branch of the you know film crew you are dealing with the guys who did the best the well-known films uh we are our fans of so so i was i was i was having this first encounter with the reactions of the crew and that made us actually uh work and and, and go to this more comic release style because we knew, knew that that's what's needed in, in tracks with mafia um so yeah lovable idiots all the time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh that's funny that's really funny now i know that while you were on set uh one of the days during filming you got the opportunity to talk with kevin feige that he was on set and you actually got to talk with him what was that conversation like he's so approachable person you you know that you're oh my god Kevin Feige is on, on set. Uh, so you think that's the, the most successful producer ever. Uh, and then he's starting, you know, a conversation with you. So, uh, and he's speaking to everybody. He's just uh, so approachable, open-hearted person. And I was happy to hear that for him, Traxxit Mafia is important. Uh, uh, so if it's important for him, it means that uh, it's important in this universe. So, um, so yeah, we were, uh, he gave us wings, uh, as to say. So then after this conversation, I understood that, you know, the directors are giving us more freedom and uh, asking us for like, yeah, now try to improvise a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can add some Polish words, go on. So yeah, it was important conversation for sure. That's awesome. That's great, man. Oh man, well, of course, Aside from Hawkeye, you're appearing in For All Mankind on Apple. What's the experience been like on that show? You know, it's great for me that uh, I think I'm very fortunate and lucky uh, to be able to show myself from the different angles to the American audience. And uh, I'm 49, but I feel like I'm just, just uh, graduating from the from the theater academy and starting my big, ex, you know, big, uh, big, big uh, dream. Um, so uh, Sergei Nikulov, that's the scientist, Russian scientist. I can speak with the Russian accent in that uh, case, and it's a different uh, role at all. And so I'm jumping with the accents. Uh, in Poland, we have like, you know, to be honest, we speak Polish. Um, there are some slight different slangs or accents but uh, as an actor in Poland we don't work on the Krakowian uh, accent or uh, 
a Poznanian accent. You know, it's not like here when the accent's like a first thing you think of when you're an actor and you build the, you know, starting to, starting to build the character. So that's a new approach for me and very, um, uh, very nice. I, you know, I loved the first season and I was already a fan of the first season of For All Mankind when I suddenly got the chance to audition uh, for the role which uh, I won. And that was the, probably my first step on, on this uh, American uh, experience of mine. Mm, and I'm happy it's not my last word uh, because I already started to work on another series. And I hope one day I will be, it will be possible for us to come back uh, for me and, and talk about that. And I hope my English will be much better at that time as well. Well, your awesome. English has been great so yes, far, man. Absolutely. Don't worry about that. Yeah, no, yeah. And of course, also um, also coming uh, out soon, I believe, is uh, your appearances in Light Years. Uh, so that was, this, that was the thing I was... I was I was trying not to to mention, but yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry uh, about that. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, it, probably it was. Uh, you know, there's I, right now after experience with Marvel, I know this. Uh, there are scoopers, right? The guys who are oh, yeah. trying to un- unravel the secrets. So yeah, uh, that, there were some scoopers about the light years, uh, the series uh, on Amazon. I already finished working on it, and uh, it will be a great, great series as well um, oh it's great stuff well yeah it's definitely when you can talk about it we would be happy to talk with you about it but if you can't talk about you. it right now we totally understand yeah no no thank for you. sure I mean, you know but I, i'm wondering is this the is this really the first step like as you're already kind of a, uh, mentioning here is this the first steps to your global domination of uh, all forms of uh, media across the world now that you're expanding beyond poland and going into uh, north american uh, projects as well um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pope, the Pope film about the Pope was already like famous abroad because of okay. the topic and the biography. Uh, I remember being treated as a saint when I went to Mexico wow. and uh, had a really strange story to tell, uh, stories to tell about that. But yeah, not, now probably it's something completely different. I'm on the brink of a big change, what I could say. Uh, you never know. Uh, and, uh, you know, even watching my interviews or some photos from the opening night of Hawkeye, I understood that I am like having like a happiness of a child again, uh, <laughs> which is which is incredible. Uh, you know, you have to be very passionate to be an actor, actually to be a filmmaker. Sometimes it's like a big sacrifice of being far away, far away, far away from your family. Um, there is a lot of sacrifices uh, during this job, but sometimes there's this uh, also moments of uh, big joy and happiness, like a child, childish uh, uh, moments of like really being in the moment. And um, and I I'm, I'm having these moments right now. So yeah, it's uh, it's a great great time for me. That is awesome, man! It sounds like yeah. you're having a wild ride. I look forward to people getting to see more of you as Thomas, as the weeks roll out here coming up to Christmas. And of course, in uh, light years when it comes out as well. Uh, yeah, man, the sky's the limit for you. It's so glad that uh, you made it across the pond and you're doing some great work, man. Thank you. And um, soon, I don't know, what, but yeah, but there will be a third season of For All Mankind and uh, CAG is not out yet. So yeah. he's still uh, trying to... Uh, to win uh, with this space program. So yeah, we'll see. Right, definitely. Well, space race, always a fun time, definitely. That's oh it. man, well, Piotr, it's been amazing talking with you and uh, we hope you have a great day, man. Thank you and same to you. Thank you for, awesome. for having me and uh, letting me tell about my joy. Thank you so much. Well, we love That's to awesome. listen, man. Thanks a lot. Well, have thank a good you. one. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.